Hi everybody, Marco Robinson again, number one best-selling author, award-winning entrepreneur, winner of the People's Choice Best Real Estate Investment Company 2015, and recently, I'm very excited about this, winner of Tatler's Best Restaurants 2015 with my Naked Restaurant. Really cool. So, what are we talking about today? What I want to talk about is I get this question asked probably most of the time, the most common question. And the question I get asked most of the time is, Marco, I love your videos, I've read your books, I've changed some things, but how do I make those big changes? How do I change the situation I'm in now from having to work in a job I hate, get out of it, create some new income and just do my own business? Well, guys, it's really not rocket science. The most important thing is you've got to understand what triggers change. And the really, when it comes down to it, if you get all the bullshit, it comes down to two things that really trigger a massive change in your physiology, your emotional state, and your mental state. And those two things are these two things here. Ins insp inspiration, I should say, and desperation. So what does that mean? Well, have you ever noticed that when you're desperate or in a desperate situation, for example, you've run out of money, you've got no money left, you have to pay the bills, well, you don't just sit there. What you do is you take action. You become desperate because you've got no choice, because you can't eat. You need to put food in your mouth. So what happens is you might go and get a, a part-time job cleaning the floor somewhere. You might work in a, a newspaper store. You might, you know, deliver newspaper. I don't really care what it is. You're so desperate, you need the cash. So what you do is you take massive action. And when you're not desperate anymore, you stop taking massive action because you're not desperate and you don't need to. Now, that's called short-term change. However, it's not long-term change because it only fulfills a certain objective. The difference with desperation and inspiration is very clear. Inspiration lasts a lifetime. And what you have to do as an individual is you have to find what inspires you to change long-term. For example, what inspires you to be a better person? What inspires you to make more money? What inspires you to help other people? What inspires you about starting your own business? What inspires you to get started in the first place? What inspires you to leave school and, you know, and, and get and do something you love instead of doing a, a job that you hate? You know, what inspires you to change? Once you find that inspiration, that inspiration actually is a fuel. It's like high octane petrol that just keeps flowing through you all the time and it kind of sets you on fire. So you don't need anything else, it's all internal. Now, to keep getting that fire burned, what you've got to do, guys, is you've got to really look inside yourself and find out really what you want to do. You know, ask the questions. In a video a few weeks ago, I talked about having space, and in that space, you've got to figure out, you've got to ask questions such as, who am I? Who do I want to be? What do I want to do? What do I want to contribute? What should I be doing right now with my life? These questions are very, very powerful questions and they give you answers. Now, sometimes when you get those answers, because you're not feeling in a particularly good state or good mood, you kind of block the answers and say, no, I can't do that. No, I don't believe in that. No, I'm not good enough for that. You have all these limiting beliefs and limiting beliefs are developed by conditioned thinking. And conditioned thinking means that when you are, you know, a baby and you grow up into a family, normally 98% of families are not rich. They're not millionaires, so therefore you're going to be conditioned from a poor mindset. And a poor mindset says there's never enough, um, you have to get a job, you have to pay the bills, and you have to survive, right? That's a poor mindset. So it's not your fault really, I mean, because you're conditioned to do that in the first place. Then you go to school. And you go to school and you go to um, a classroom full of other people there. And the teachers that are teaching you in that classroom, you've got to think about, are they rich or are they poor? Well, teachers are some of the poor, most poorest paid people in the world. Yes, some of them love what they do, but they're not really rich. They're not entrepreneurs and they're not, they're not, they're not really making or creating wealth. And they're certainly not teaching you that. What they're teaching you is really how to survive and how to get a job. So because of that poor mindset, that's going to give you a result of a poor life. So when you come into um, a job or when you can leave school, this is the kind of mindset you have because you've been conditioned to think a certain way. 
Now, when you've been conditioned to think a certain way, it's very difficult to change unless something happens to you that triggers an event to get you to change something about your life. Now, you probably read or heard about people who've had a car crash and they wake up one, they've, they've, they've seen this light and when they come back and they, they, you know, they, they see this light and this reality and they know they've got to change. Or people that have met someone that's told them they've been in the same situation as them and they were just like them five years ago but now they've got their own business, they're millionaires, blah, blah, blah. That's actually quite inspirational. And the, my favorite thing is really uh, true life stories of people that have really changed. Now, to give you an example, it's quite old, but you know, one of my favorite stories is a couple of people from quite a few years ago, over a hundred years ago. One of those people is a guy called Thomas Edison. Don't know if any, any people have heard of him, you know, but he's the reason really why there's light shining on me right now. There's lights in the ceiling because, whoops, he, <laughs> he found a way to, you know, light a bulb to last so we can actually not use gas anymore. And that guy, wow, the, you know, the resistance he had at the time, you know, it's over 100 years ago, guys, well over 100 years ago. The resistance he had at the time when he announced he was going to invent a light bulb, no one believed him. Everyone laughed at him. And um, because then at the time, you know, motor cars, there were very few motor cars around and motor cars had like gas for the headlights. So someone had candles for the headlights, right? And he says he's going to make a light bulb. So no one believed him, hardly anyone. The only person that believed in it was him. And the people that were working in, in his laboratory, they didn't believe him either. But they, they were there because they wanted payment. But he kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. He made 10,000 experiments. And eventually he found, got to one experiment where the light bulb came on, but it, it, then it exploded after 10 seconds. And he kept going and kept going. And eventually he made it work. And he said he, he discovered it and still no one believed him. In fact, it was so bad, they had, they had, he had one friend and that friend was the mayor of New York. And he went to see the mayor of New York with this light bulb in this box. And the mayor was sitting in his big fat chair like that. He's leaning back, says, right, Thomas, what, what is it? What do you got to show me? So he got this light bulb in this box out. He put this light bulb, switched this button, and this light bulb came on on this, on this mayor's desk. And the mayor went, whoa! The first thing the mayor did was look under the box and see if there was something under there, like a, you know, a bit of gas or a candle or something. I couldn't find anything. He said, Thomas, how do you do that? That's amazing. So eventually the mayor believed it because he only believed it when he saw it. Now, at that time, all of New York's streets were lit by gas. They weren't lit by electric. So the lamps in the street lights were all gas powered. So the mayor said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I will let you light one street of light. You're using your invention by electricity instead of using gas. We're going to show the world that your invention works. So it was very excited. Thomas was very, really excited. So they came to the day and there was two massive dynamos. They had to go at the same speed to power the, the street lights, two massive dynamos. And they switched the on button and the dynamo started going and suddenly there was a big explosion and it all stopped because one of the dynamos wasn't going the same speed. There was something in between that wasn't going right. So if they fixed it and then they pulled the switch and eventually all the lights in the street came on and everybody around the world said, wow, that's a miracle. You see what I mean? Henry Ford, who invented the Model T Ford. Henry Ford, right, invents the production line for the Model T Ford. Now, his invention was so good and changed the motor industry literally overnight so people could afford a motor car. He wasn't educated. So the Supreme Court actually called on Henry Ford to answer why he was so clever. Can you believe that actually happened? And they said, listen, you're not qualified to make a motor car. You're not qualified to put cars on a production line. Where did that come from? You're not educated. He was questioned by the Supreme Court about his invention. That's how much disbelief there was out there. Now, those are very inspirational stories. And, you know, they give me goosebumps even talking about that because can you imagine the kind of resistance, the kind of, you know, the kind of obstacles these guys went through to get, to get their dream and make it into reality? And when you look around you in today's world, you know, people are not getting pissed off about not inventing a light bulb, they're getting, people are getting, um, you know, upset because their post on Facebook didn't get out on time or was with the wrong picture or they didn't like on something. This is the world today, guys. Seriously, it's sad, isn't it? Because literally, you have the power to do anything you want. I mean, look at me, school dropout, had no money whatsoever, had no girlfriends. I thought I was gay at one point because I couldn't get a girl. Seriously, I was so shy. But look what happened to me. You know, I changed my life because someone gave me a book and said, read the book, keep reading it, 
when you've read it, keep reading it again, read it again. So I read the book eight times the day after literally and my life was changed. And um, I talk about this in, in another video in, in more detail, but basically I read that book and I had so much confidence and belief in myself that I was so inspired that I became salesperson of the year and broke the world sales record in my industry selling a billion dollars worth of products. That's how powerful inspiration is. So guys, if you want to change, what you've got to do is look for things that inspire you. Watch a movie, a true story. Watch, read a book, um, you know, meet people in networking or seminars and talk to those people. You know what? In seminars and events, you can meet some amazing people, the most amazing people you've ever met that have, trust me, have had a worse life than you and have turned it around into something amazing. You can be amazing too, but what you've got to first do is look in the mirror and say, right, how do I change? How do I get inspired? And go and look for it. Thank you. This is Marco Robinson.